Well, Merry Christmas and welcome again. We're going to take just a few minutes to look into God's Word. I am so glad that you're here. I'll be honest with you, uh, it is wonderful seeing a packed house this evening because it is cold. It is real cold, and, and, and you being here is just absolutely wonderful, and, and uh, uh, I just thank you for coming. Uh, at the first Christmas, the earth received the most wonderful gift it could have ever received. It received the gift of hope, the gift of peace, the gift of joy and love and freedom. It received the gift of light and life it received the gift of jesus emmanuel god with us it was the most awesome gift that could have ever been received by the world the story of jesus is the greatest story ever told it is the good news of jesus coming to be with us this evening i want to take just a few minutes and look in the book of john because more than any other book, it kind of describes who Jesus is, where he came from, and how he is the light of the world. He is the light in ways that has changed history. He is the light of the world. But this was no ordinary baby that was born in the manger. He was, like any, he was unlike any other baby ever born before. Because it was God coming to be with us. We're going to look in John chapter 1 in verse 1 through 5. And it says this. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in a dark place, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that you'd be with us right now. Father, th this season is so wonderful. It is a season where your light can shine in dark places unlike ever before. It's when people's hearts are open to the message of Jesus. Father, help us to look in our hearts and see if that light is shining. That light that shines throughout all of the centuries. The gift of your Son to us. The light that has come into the world. Father, I pray if there's someone here that's dealing with some darkness. They're dealing with some difficult issues that they're having in life. Father, I pray that they would receive that wonderful gift of your Son into their heart this evening. Father, be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. The J Gospel of John paints a portrait of who the baby in the manger is, unlike any of the rest of the gospel writers. Because all of the rest of the gospel writers start off by describing the baby uh, in the manger. They describe the wise men who came to see him, the shepherds who uh, were out in the fields watching their flocks by night. The writers describe the star, the great star that was in the sky that led the wise men to where they were. And we always like the picture of the camels and the, and the sheep. And if you were at our Christmas, uh, uh, saw our Christmas show, uh, we had some absolutely adorable sheep chasing each other on stage. If you were here, can I get a witness? They were adorable. It was great. It was hilarious. That's what Chris, children's Christmas plays are all about. It was good stuff. But all of the gospel writers, with the exception of John, start off telling that Christmas story in the way that everybody loves. But John does it a little different because he backs up through history. Because the baby born in a manger wasn't any ordinary baby at all. But it was the pre-existent Jesus who had been before history and time altogether. Because his, uh, his gospel starts with, In the beginning was the Word. One of the most difficult things to understand in all of Scripture when you look at the story of Jesus was why did He come? Why, if, if you didn't have to, why would you come to earth? Why would you bother? And that is a question that has plagued mankind the whole time. Why did Jesus come? The reason He came was because He loved us. He loved us so much that He came. And that is amazing because there is nowhere and no point in anyone's life where you can't say that no one loves you because Jesus loves you like no other. 
Jesus loves you more than anyone else. He loved you so much he came to die for you. That's how much Jesus loved you. And he starts his gospel off with in the beginning. The purpose of... Of, of Jesus was to save mankind and the Father and the, and the Son sat down in the beginning before time and made this decision that He would come and rescue mankind from their sin. Verse 14 describes who this Word is. John 1.14 says this, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us and we have seen His glory. The glory of the one and the only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh. The Word was Jesus. The Word was the baby in the manger. The Word came and dwelt among us. The, the Verse 1 says, in the beginning. The beginning means the source. And it reflects the origin of something or the authority behind something. It is its beginning. It was at the start of creation. God was at the start of creation. Jesus was at the start of creation. He lived long before the baby in the manger. He was alive. And so what he did on that first Christmas morning was a choice of his own will to come and be with us. To think the great God of the universe came in the form of a little baby. The hands that created the world, is what John is saying, the hands that created that, the entire world became a baby and relied on someone else for his needs. He became small just for us. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, God came. In the beginning, they chose to come and be among us. The eternal God left the glories of heaven to come and be with us. Isaiah 9, 6 says this, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace. Isaiah's description of the Messiah refers to Messiah as the Mighty God. The one who created all things. And John says the same thing. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Verse 2 says this. The same was in the beginning with God. That word uh, with means that they were face to face. Which is really interesting. Because what ended up happening. There was a discussion in heaven about who would come. And Jesus said I will go. It's amazing that Jesus said that he would go. But he did. He said I'm going to come to earth. As a baby, live among us. Become one with us so that we could reach the world, the lost world. That is what Jesus decided to do. The same was in the beginning with God. He became one like us. Jesus not only points the way to salvation, he was the way of salvation. He left all that, that eternity had so that he could be one with us. Verse 3 says this, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him, verse 4 says, was life. And life was the light of men. Verse 4 calls Jesus the light and life. What was Jesus' purpose was to bring life. To bring life where there was only death. And to bring light where there was only darkness. The Bible says that the world, the world that we live in is a dark place. And it doesn't take long looking around to see that it is dark. And darkness can be a terrifying thing. People will often do everything they can to not be in darkness. When, uh, when your kids are little, you put night lights in the hallways so you can go and check on them. When kids get little, they like uh, night lights in their room. And if you ask them, do you want the night light on? Uh, when they get a little older, they will say, no, I don't need the night light. But they'll want the light on just the same. But because people are afraid of what might be in the darkness, they're afraid of the unknown. They're afraid what might be out there. The, the police and the towns put up uh, security lighting for the purpose of keeping us safe. Because we don't like the darkness. 
But you see, our world is in darkness, and it has always been in darkness. And what's different about that is when the light shines, and the light of Jesus shines, you see the world, you see yourself for who you really are. You see yourself the way God sees you. And so what ended up happening when Jesus came to the world and was this light that shone so very brightly, people didn't really like Jesus at all. Because he revealed who they really were. John later in verses 3 and 19 says this. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Men who had fellowship with God chose to reject God. They chose to reject Jesus. They broke his law. His law. They broke his heart. And they chose to dwell in darkness. And people waited for years. They waited for years and years for that light to shine. There was people who longed for Jesus to show up. There were people who waited, but there were many who rejected him. You see, that's the thing. Everybody gets a choice to whether you want to accept Jesus or reject him. It's a choice. And a lot of people will celebrate Christmas and there'll be packages and wrappings and everybody will have a good time and they will miss the entire purpose of Christmas, which is Jesus. I can't think of a more sad thing in the world to, to have a whole Christmas season and never reflect on that great gift of Jesus when he came to be with us. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the way of salvation. But the world didn't like the light. Verse 5 says this, And the light shines in a dark place, and the darkness could not comprehend it. That's a very, very interesting word if you start looking at it. When Jesus came into the world, there was people who didn't understand what Jesus was all about. A lot of people come up and they can't decide what they think about Jesus and who Jesus is. And, and they're curious about Jesus, but they don't want to get close enough to actually find out. The word it can be translated comprehend. It can also be, it could not defeat or, or pull down or overcome the light. And I love it when it's translated the way overcome because this is what it means. It only takes the smallest spark of light. It only takes the smallest spark of seeing who Jesus is and that flash of light to realize that there's something different. Now, years ago, I used to love to go into caves and caves were extremely dark. If you turn your lights off inside a cave, you can't see anything at all. And I was in the middle of a cave one time walking around in the darkness and my light, I had a little car, car bead light on, it got fainter and fainter and fainter to where there was almost no light at all to see my way through the cave. And I could have easily become lost. But what I did is I took my little striker on my helmet and I spun it for just a second. And it would light the room up so bright. And all it was was a big old cave but one little spark. And that little spark is all some people need to see who Jesus is and for once get a glimpse of themselves and realize how great Jesus is and give their lives to him. The light had come into the world and the, even though the darkness tried to defeat it, the darkness tried to overcome it, the darkness tried to pull it down, yet it could not. You see, the message of Jesus was so strong. I am I am God, and I have come to be with you. I have come to be with you so that you can be with me. That is the message of the gospel. That was the message of Jesus. The light had come, and the light had come into a dark world. And the darkness of the world tried to defeat who Jesus was, tried to pull him down, but it could not. Not devil in all of hell could stop Jesus from what he was doing. And he went and died on the cross for us so that we could be out of the darkness and come into the light. We could be one with him so that our lives could be filled with joy. It could be filled with strength. It could be filled with hope. And we could have a future. 
That's what Jesus did. Who was the baby in the manger? The baby in the manger was the very God of the universe. Where did he come from? He came from eternity past with you in mind. With the purpose of redeeming all of us. So what does that mean for me? What does, what does, what's the point of, of Jesus coming and, and what do I need to do to receive that light that, that, that Jesus brings? Maybe, maybe you're here this morning and you're feeling a little dark inside. Maybe you're a little stressed out. We see the light that Jesus brings, first off, it helps us from emotional darkness that we have in our hearts and lives. A lot of times people find themselves stressed out. At this time of the year, people get really, really, really stressed out. And if I were to ask you, over the last month, has there been a point in time in your life where you were completely stressed out? And just like, I am so tired of that. And some of you are already nodding your heads, yes. Because you know what you know what that is. This season is supposed to be about Jesus. But we plan so many things. We get to this place where we get emotionally dark. We get emotionally spent. We don't want anymore because we've had all we can take. I know there are a lot of people who have been preparing meals and buying packages and, and, and worrying and trying to make sure that everything is all right. And you've come to a place, and you may be here this evening, and you're emotionally spent. You may be a believer in Jesus, but you feel emotionally spent in the inside. Let me tell you something. The light of Jesus is for you this morning. For the person that feels absolutely exhausted and wore out, Jesus came to be light in your dark world. You see, a lot of times when we get stressed out and we, get, uh, we may get depressed, we may get filled with anxiety, we may get uh, frustrated and, and just feel wore out. When we pause for just a minute and reflect on who Jesus is, what he did in our lives, and what it is a gift to be one of his child, Jesus can pull you out of that just like that. So there is emotional darkness that we, that we have to deal with in our world. And, and it can happen to anybody at any time. And we just feel overwhelmed with everything that's going on. Another darkness that can happen in our life is moral darkness. Now this is what happens. You may even be a believer, but you may have allowed something into your heart, your life that doesn't belong there. You may be doing something or participating in something that you know is wrong and you're here this evening and you feel darkness coming into your life and, and it's kind of shadowing out everything that, that Jesus wants you to have and everything that Jesus wants you to be and you're experiencing a kind of darkness in your own life. You can be experiencing moral darkness. And, and that, that darkness is kind of invading everything that Christmas should be in your heart and your mind. That moral darkness is keeping you from God and keeping you separated. You see, when, when we get a glimpse of, of Jesus and we see that light, it reveals who we are inside. And sometimes we don't like necessarily who we are and we'll pull away from that and we'll say, no, I, 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 there's a lot of people who, who look at Jesus and they'll say, you know what, I, 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 I want a little bit of Jesus in my life, but I don't need a whole lot. And so I'm going to keep Jesus at a distance and you're missing out on the things that, that God has for you, the blessings that he has for you when you do that. Another darkness, and this is the big one, that people experience is spiritual darkness. And this is where I have never asked Jesus to come into my heart and my life and be my Savior. And if you're here this evening and you've never invited Jesus in, this is what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about the gift of a Savior. He came and went to a cross and died for you, for every single person in here. And just like any gift that hopefully you'll be, get to open a bunch of them tomorrow, but just like any gift, it has to be received. And so many people look at the gift of Jesus and they lift, leave that present setting where it is and say, I'm going to come to that another day. Let me tell you, if you're here this evening and you've not invited Jesus into your heart and life, today is the day to do that. 
Today is the day to invite Jesus in and say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I want you to come into my life and save me because I'm a long way from you. And I'm in darkness and I, I got a glimpse of your light and I really want that now. So I encourage you just in a few minutes to invite Jesus into your heart and life and, and say yes to him. Say yes to the light. Later on in the book of John, John writes this in John 13, 19. He says, this is the verdict. That light has come into the world. But people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does, not, does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. You have an opportunity to receive Jesus into your heart and life. I encourage you to do that. I can't think of a better time this Christmas season. So if you're here this evening and you feel emotionally spent, you're tired, you're wore out, and I know there's a lot of people in here, let the light of Jesus shine in your heart. If you're here this evening and you've got some sin in your heart and your life that is bond, uh, binding you down and pulling you down, I pray right now that the light of Jesus will shine his way in your heart and you say, I'm, I'm done with that. I, I'm letting that go. I don't need that. And if you're here this evening and you've never invited Jesus into your heart and life, I pray that you'll say yes to Jesus this evening. Would you mind bowing your heads and closing your eyes for with me for just a second? Because I want to pray for you. Nobody's going to be looking around. It's only me up here right now. But I just want to ask you a quick question. And, and, and don't be afraid because I'm not going to say anything to anybody. But if you're here this evening and you just feel emotionally spent, you feel wore out, maybe you've tried to do everything right and you just feel exhausted, would you just slip your hand up? I just want to pray for you. I see those hands. Anybody else? Just, I'm just tired. I see that hand. Anybody else? I'm tired. I would like to be prayed for. I'm going to slip my hand up. I see those. Yes, all of those all over the place. I see those hands. Very good. I'm just tired. Is there someone here that would lift their hand up and say, you know what, I, I, I'm dealing with some things right now. And, and I don't really want to say anything. I, I'm dealing with some stuff. And I want you to pray for me. Would anybody lift their hand up and say, that's me. I, I'm dealing with some stuff. And, and I would just want you to pray for me. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? Okay. Is there anybody here? I see that hand. Is there anybody here that would say, I know I haven't asked Jesus to come into my heart and life, and I would love to do that tonight. Would anybody lift their hand up and say, I would like to ask Jesus into my heart and be the Savior of my life. Anybody here? Anybody else? Let's pray, Father. I just pray for each person that lifted their hand up. Father, you know each situation. Father, this is the most wonderful time of the year. This wonderful time when we get to celebrate your birth. Father, I pray for each person that raised their hand. Each person that's dealing with stuff right now, they're tired or they're having some moral issue in their life. Or, Father, they just need to be saved. Father, I pray that you'd just be with each one. Help them to receive the wonderful gift of your life and your light into their heart and minds. And, Father, if there's someone here that is, that is dealing with some really heavy stuff, Father, I pray you begin to work in their heart and life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pam's going to come and she's going to play Silent Night for us. Now this is one of my absolutely favorite parts of the service because we're going to light the candles in just a minute. And this is the way it is. Uh, let's go ahead and dim all the lights down there. Uh, uh, let's kill these lights because this is so cool. When we start uh, sharing the, the, the candle, and we're going to do that, what ends up happening is this room is going to light itself up but yeah, just the candles and the piano. But other than that, there's not going to be any lights in the room. <laughs> Go ahead. You can start any time. The message of Jesus is so wonderful. Y'all can stand. The message of Jesus is so wonderful that he sent his son to die for us. And what he wants us to do if we're a believer in him is to tell everyone that we can about that wonderful silent night when Jesus was born and all that he could do in our lives. 
And it only takes one person with one flame and it starts spreading across the room really, really fast. So I'm going to start us off right here and I'm going to... And if you'll just share that around the room, you'll begin to see the, the entire room glow from one little candle because Jesus is the light of the world. Y'all don't have candles. We well, couldn't sing with them anyway.
King. Christ our Savior is born. Christ our Savior is born.